Everybody, I hope you're doing fantastically well. It is Connor here, and we are back, of course, with your Tottenham Hotspur preview. Leeds United head uh, well to Ellen Road to face Spurs in this weekend's uh, well, it's midday kickoff, isn't it? On Saturday, the team news has come out today. It's a bit annoying, isn't it? We're all a little bit annoyed by it. <laughs> it's a day by day thing. It's a hematoma for Calvin Phillips, it's a hematoma for uh, Rafinha, which if you don't know what a hematoma is, it's, a, it's essentially a really serious dead calf. I've actually had one before. It kept me out for six weeks. It's not great, honestly. It's not great. It's not good to have, but unfortunately, two of our best, well, two our best players have got them, which is going to rule them out of this Spurs game. You know, last time we played Spurs, I thought we really didn't give a proper account of ourselves, and, and we, we it was easy, really, for Spurs. We had the first maybe 10, 15 minutes where we're knocking the ball around well, but they sort of just sat in, hit us on the counter-attack with world-class players, which, you know, it'd be nice to have at your sort of uh, disposal, wouldn't it? But And they just really picked us off. And then they just sat in, didn't they? They just kept hitting us on the counter-attack. Leeds essentially whimpered out to a 3-0 loss, really. It was one of the poor performances of the season for me because we didn't really give a good account of ourselves. Spurs weren't that good. They didn't need to be that good. I thought they were in second gear, really. Um, but obviously, we saw a pretty poor performance last weekend, didn't we, against Brighton. The the dust hasn't really settled for me. I thought it was a really bad performance from Leeds United. A couple of individuals who I didn't think really looked up for it, to be honest. A lot of people are pointing to fatigue. I'm not having any of that. You look at the last six games where Leeds United have been on point. Um, I'm not putting any of that down to fatigue, to be quite honest with you. I just thought tactically Brighton had our number. And, and if I'm being brutally honest with you guys, I don't think we had enough Premier League quality in the attacking capacity on the pitch. And I reflected that in my review after the game. I don't think we had enough. We didn't have a, enough Premier League quality on the pitch. So what can you do when you don't have that out ball? A lot of people are talking about at this moment in time, Patrick Bamford, he's only scored four goals in, I think it's 19 games, which is a massive drop-off. And, you know, you look at a lot of the those games, they still have involved Rafinha. I think we've discussed over the past couple of games that Bamford, Harrison's performances are all elevated by having Rafinha in that side because he's so good, he's so pivotal to everything we do going forward and he essentially is the beneficiary to a lot of good things that Harrison and Bamford and Roberts do but without having him in there it's it's an even worse effect at this moment in time, you've seen a, there's no coincidence, you've seen a massive drop off from Jack Harrison, as I've said a, a probably even bigger drop off from Patrick Bamford, you know you've, you've seen him completely out of, out of games really haven't haven't we the, the past month completely out of it like Brighton you, you barely saw him but it's because he's not got this backup this quality backup from that individual but it just shows the reliance that we have on Rafinha as an individual I think it's become abundantly clear to individuals who think that we'll be able to do it with just Jack Harrison and do it with Tyler Roberts and do it with Patrick Bamford. You do have to have that X factor in the Premier League going forward. You have to have that elite player. You genuinely do do just have to have that if you want to be in the position that we're in and continue striving on to you know potentially Europe in a couple of years' time. And, and I think that's become abundantly clear to a lot of Leeds fans in this past sort of three weeks when Raf has been out. Calvin Phillips, of course, from a, in a defensive capacity, it's a massive blow if he is out. We don't know. Both have been quoted as as as, as Bielsa saying day-to-day. -day. We're managing them day-to-day. -day. Obviously, we had that with the Brighton game. Bielsa had the exact same rhetoric. It's going to be day-to-day. -day. Um, and they weren't available for that game. So, hopefully, it, we, we just don't know, do we? We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know the seriousness of the hematoma. But Phillips out of this game is going to be absolutely massive. You know, I think Ryan Mason's trying to get the best out of someone like Deli Alley. We know the capabilities he has. Obviously, uh, Gareth Bale scored a hat-trick the other day against Spurs. He's probably going to keep that momentum, Ryan Mason, by playing uh, Bale uh, in, in a continuum, really. Obviously, Hun Min Son is going to be playing as well, who caused us problems last time, and Harry Kane, of course. So, it's going to be a really difficult game without Calvin Phillips. We saw the attacking capabilities of a side who were in 17th, who probably could have had four or five last weekend. 
playing Leeds last week without Calvin Phillips in that side and, and, and without Rafinha, you know, the combo of a defensive and an attacking two huge players in our side. And it's going to be a tough game, guys. I'm not going to... There's going to be no better bones about it with me. I predicted a 1-0 win at Brighton last week, but in, in my heart of heart, I knew it was going to be a tough game last week, you know, especially after the press conference that Bielsa gave and, and us knowing on the day that Phillips was going to be out of the side. It's been a great season. Of course, it has. I feel like I have to say this now at the start of every preview because, you know, some people in the comments will sometimes say, and everyone's obviously football subjective and it's a game of opinions, but I think... The season's been unbelievable, hasn't it? But we, we, we're we focusing on this game right now. And what can we do? Well, I, I'd throw the dice a little bit. You know, me and Brownie were talking earlier and, and I'd throw the dice. Uh, why not start a Somerville? You know, why not include a, a drama in the match day squad like we saw last weekend? It, could he even feature? Obviously, we know that's ailing side. Could we tinker around with that a little bit? Could there be a formation change? You know, Gelhard, we don't know what's going on there. Um, is he going to be back fitness-wise? Could we include him in the match day squad? I don't know. I, I just think at this moment in time, it needs freshening up. I think it's going to be a pragmatic game from Leeds United. I think it's going to be backs to the wall. I think they're going to attack, attack, attack. Obviously, you've seen with Ryan Mason, the shackles have been lifted a little bit from Tottenham and they've got world-class players from top to bottom, really. We know that. I think a lot of fans have been sort of of the opinion that Spurs are a little bit of a laughing stock, but they're still on a different trajectory to what we are on at this moment in time, you know, in terms of the class of players that they have. And I think it, we could potentially see something similar to Brighton, but the positives are they play a 4-2-3-1 formation. Leeds are notoriously very good against the 4-2-3-1 formation. Why? Because it matches up to the 4-1-4-1 pretty nicely. I think we're going to see Robin Cott in, in central defensive midfield. I think you're going to see Liam Cooper come straight back in. And I think we're going to see Pascal Strauch left out for this one in particular. But Paveda, you know, when you look at someone like Crescencio Somerville and what he's done in the under-23s, is he ready? Is he not ready? And we know Bielsa doesn't like to tinker with the squad. He doesn't see any game as an experiment. And I think... When you involve players like Gelhard, Greenwood, Drama, potentially, you know, Somerville in the starting eleven, you're essentially saying there that we're experimenting, you know, when we're maybe not taking this game as seriously. I think that's how Bielsa sees it. Um but what's what's Pervader done ahead of Somerville for me? You know, even when Pervader's been apparent in the twenty threes when I've when I've seen them, Somerville is 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 looking very, very dangerous in comparison. He looks like he's got a decent end product as well, which I think is the criticism right now for players like Pervader, players like uh, Roberts. The end product just is not there. Um, so why not throw the dice? As I say, I, I don't know. I don't think Bielsa will do that. I think we're going to see Pervader start. I pray he doesn't start Dallas on the right. That made no sense for me. Absolutely no sense. I'd rather see Dallas at centre back than a wood right wing. Um, the fact that Stuart Dallas was a right winger was ba is baffling to me still because he's just got none of the attributes for a winger. Um, so I hope we don't see that again. That failed miserably. I'd like to see either Crescencio or Somerville out there, or maybe we can tinker with playing Rodrigo out there. You guys know my thoughts on playing Tyler Roberts out wide. I like that. We experimented with it in the championship. I thought it worked. He's got great dribbling capabilities. But I think we do need to see Roberts partnered again with Stuart Dallas because we saw a solidity. We saw Leeds unbeaten in six games with those two in the central midfield. He tinkered with that. He put Dallas out 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 uh, outright, and it didn't work. It all changed. The 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 mould of Leeds changed. We were getting ripped apart. And what I do want to um, say is, just because Dallas is in there, doesn't mean Leeds are going to become a brick wall in there. You know, it was all over the pitch last weekend. It wasn't just in in the central midfield. So I think that needs to get out of fans head really I would genuinely if you're looking at Somerville out wide uh, potentially if you're looking at Rodrigo out wide potentially you're looking at Roberts out wide to some people I, I'd, I'd stick with him in the middle but I think Rodrigo out wide why not you know we're not going to see him up front he's been poor up front central midfield central attacking midfield you put him in central attacking midfield he's not as diligent as running with his men you're going to see La Celso you're potentially going to see Ndombele getting past him and I don't think he's great in the defensive capacity as I've just said so we want to try avoid that so why not maybe start him out wide and see what creative innovative play he can create out there and, and hopefully maybe replicate some sort of Rafinha mould because you know he is one of our top he's a, let's be let's be right guys when we bought this guy he was he was seen as a world-class player, wasn't he? 
Um, and I think he is a terrific player, Rodrigo. We've just not found the spot for him yet. I really think his capabilities on the ball are very good. I think the problem is it's been highlighted so much about his defensive um, sort of defensive problems that, that that's maybe shrouded our opinion of him. But he's an attacker. He's a centre forward. He's not a central midfielder. Was he brought in to be a central midfielder? I don't think so. I think he was brought in to be competition for Patrick Bamford. That all changed when the Cuisance move fell through. You know, from where uh, Rodrigo was going to play this season, so he's had a lot to deal with, COVID, all this sort of stuff. So I'm not, I'm not harking on the get Rodrigo out rubbish because I think that's that's farcical to be quite honest with you. But it'd be nice to see him out wide. Could we see a difference in him out wide? You know, he's he's a quick player over a short distance. He's very tricky. He's very nimble. He's good in the air. And we need something out wide. It was it was awful last weekend because we looked championship. There was no out ball. There was nothing. We'd get forward, we'd get the ball out, and we'd have nothing. Brighton looked like they had numbers, they had quality, um, and they looked, the te- looked like the team in, in ninth at the time. We looked like the team in 17th, and that's just because we've got so many injuries out. I just wish, you know, we, we all spoke last week, didn't we? It was like, oh, Forshaw's going to be back, Urente, Cork, uh, all these players are going to be back, and now it just seems to have reversed back into that cycle again, doesn't it? Of now we've got players out, Forshaw's had a setback, you know, Calvin's out, Rafinha's out, Costa's out. It's just, it's like, can we just get a consistent run? But this is the problem with having a small squad with a lack of quality throughout Premier League quality throughout elite quality throughout because when one man gets injured you have to shift it around and it's not always shifting around with pure quality the player who needs to step up in my opinion for this game is Jack Harrison I'm seeing too much of him going back Uh, a lot of people are just going to say in the comments you're getting at Harrison he's done wonders this season I'm not basing this on this season I'm basing this on his last month which is his form his running form which I'm basing on he needs to step up in terms of getting the ball and taking on his man he's got the abilities he's got the technicalities he's got the attributes to take his man on we've seen that throughout this season his crossing needs to improve if if we're to get anything from this game and to really help Patrick Bamford Harrison needs to have one of his his games that he was having at the start of the season because there's been a significant drop off from him and with Leeds being so prolific and dynamic and fluid out wide normally this is where Jack needs to step up and be that man you know he's never really been that man at Ellen Road there's always players in front of him in terms of players that we have who are the X factor but I really think Jack Harrison could step up in these final four games and be like you know what I can carry the burden I can carry the burden of this Leeds United side and that'd be great to see Ty Roberts let's get an assist let's get a goal great through the transitions but I want to see some end product from you sir guys if you've enjoyed this let me know what your opinions are in the comment section below I really want to hear them I read all of your comments I try my best to comment back I really do on Twitter on Instagram and YouTube of course Um, there will be more content coming next week don't worry it's been a hellish week for McGilligan but I hope you're all doing fantastically well guys have a uh, have a good evening have a good weekend come on Leeds I'm gonna go for a 1-1 let me know your score predictions cheers